In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to change the grass areas in this photograph into water like you see here. To start, we need to add an alpha channel to this photograph if it doesn't have one already. So here on the layer, right click and select Add Alpha Channel. And then we need to duplicate this layer, and we can do that by pressing the duplicate button right here. So we can go ahead and turn off this bottom layer right now, and you can press this button right here to do that. And next we're going to use the Free Select tool to cut out the grass areas. So click on the Free Select tool that looks like a lasso right here. And then let's zoom in on the area that we're going to cut out. So I'll zoom in on this bottom right hand corner here. And then I'll pick a starting point and just click and release the mouse button. And then drag this up here and then click and release. And then I'll just go around the edge here doing the same thing. And now since I'm up to the edge of the photo, I want to reposition the photo just a little bit to give myself some space to work. I can do that if I go down to this button right here and press and hold the mouse button. And then I can drag this around to reposition the photograph. So I'll put it about right there. And then I can come up here and select outside the photograph area. And I'll just continue my selection over here until I get back to the starting point. And then the last spot that I'll click on is the very first point and that'll finish the selection. And with this still selected, I'm going to use the same button and reposition this over to the left side. And then I can select the grass area on the left. And before continuing with the selection, if I press this button right here under the tool options, this will allow me to add to my selection instead of replacing it. So then just like before, I'll use this tool to select the area that I want to erase. And then next, go up to the Select menu and select Feather. And we're going to feather this selection by 5 pixels. And our next step is going to be to fill in this area, and by feathering it, it'll allow the edges to be smoother. So to fill in the area, select the Paint Bucket tool, and then come down to the Tool options and make sure that Fill Whole Selection is selected. And also make sure that your foreground color is set to black, and then click in the grass area. And then go over to the right side and make sure that that's filled in also. And then go up to the Select menu and select Shrink. And we're going to shrink this area by 10 pixels. And then press the Delete key on your keyboard to delete this area. And then we'll also scroll over to the left side to make sure that that area is deleted. And then go back up to the Select menu and select Grow. And we're going to grow this by the same 10 pixels that we shrunk it by. And then next select the eraser tool. And then select a hard brush. I'm going to use a brush of hardness 100. And then set the brush size to something pretty big. And then come over here and erase the black lines that are on the left, the right, and the bottom sides of this area that was just deleted but we want to leave the top line in place. And then scroll over to the right side and do the same thing. And this black line that we have in the back now is going to be the containing area for our water. And now we can turn the selection off. So go to the Select menu and select None. And then we can zoom out on our image by going to the View menu, select Zoom, and Fit Image in Window. The next thing that we're going to do is to turn our bottom image into an image that will be the reflection in the water. So you can turn the bottom layer back on again by pressing this button. 
and then select the bottom layer by clicking on it. And then select the Flip tool, which is this button right here. And down in the Tool Options, make sure that Vertical is selected. And then click on the grass area. And that flips our image. And then choose the Move tool. And then click in this area again and drag this bottom image down. And if you press the control key after you start dragging, it'll drag this image straight down. And I can only drag it down to this spot, and then I have to go up and grab it again. And I also need to release the control button while I do this. So I'll drag down again, and then press the control key, and then let up on the mouse, and then drag down again, press the control key. And I need to keep doing this until I get this bottom image placed. And you can see in this area right here that I have this light pole close to its reflection of the light pole. But over on this side, there's a large space between these two light poles. And I can fix this by using the shear tool. So click on the shear tool right here, and then click on the reflected image, and then I can come over to the left side of this grid that was created here, and I can just drag this left side up and then press the Shear button. And now the distance between these two light poles right here is about the same distance between these two light poles right here. And if you don't get the angle right when you use the Shear tool, you can just undo what you've just done by pressing Control z on the keyboard, and then just do it again with a different angle. And you may have to do it a couple times before you get it just right. And then next, go back up to the Move tool again and select it, and then move this bottom section up a little bit until you can no longer see any of the grassy area. And that looks good. And then next, to make this water look realistic, we need to add some ripples to it. So we're going to add a new layer by pressing this button right here. And for the layer fill type, select White and press OK. And this new layer should be in between these other two layers. And so if it's on any other layer, just use these green up and down arrows to reposition the layer. And now with this layer in the middle, you can go ahead and turn off the top layer. And then make sure that you have this middle layer selected. And then go up to the Filters menu and select Render, Clouds, and Difference Clouds. And you can keep the X size set to its default value of 4, but for the Y size, slide this over until you get a value of about 12. And then click the checkbox next to Turbulent. And then press OK. And then zoom way out on this image. And then go over here and select the Perspective tool. And then click on the image. And then grab the bottom left corner and drag this out to the side. And then do the same with the bottom right corner. And then press the Transform button. And then we can zoom back in on this. And what we just did was to add some perspective to the ripples. So you'll notice that the ripples on the bottom here, which are closest to us, are larger. And then the ripples get smaller as they move away from us towards the background. And now you can come over here and turn on the top layer again. And then make sure that you still have the middle layer selected. And then click on the Scale tool, which is this button right here. And then come over here to your image and click in the Water area. And next, grab this top handle here in this grid area and drag this down until it's just within the water area. And I'm also going to pull the bottom of this down some so that some of these larger ripples are not visible. And then press the Scale button. And let's go ahead and re-zoom our image again. So go to the View menu, select Zoom, and Fit Image in Window. And the next thing that we're going to do is to apply a Displace filter. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that these bottom two layers are the same size. 
So right click on this middle layer and select Layer to Image Size. And then right click on the bottom layer and do the same thing. And we can go ahead and turn off the middle layer for now. So we'll just press this button right here. And then make sure that your bottom layer is selected. But take note of the name of this middle layer, which is just called Layer. And now come up to the Filters menu and select Map and Displace. And since our middle layer is called Layer, we need to use these two drop-down boxes to find that layer. So you can just click it, and I can see the word Layer right here. So this is what I want to select. And I need to do the same thing with this bottom drop-down box. And you can leave the X and Y displacement value set to 20. But for the edge behavior, select Smear. And then press OK. And now you can see that we have ripples in the water. And it's especially noticeable along the reflection of these light poles. And what the Displace filter did was to manipulate this bottom layer image that we had based upon the middle layer. And the next thing that we want to do is to add some subtle shadows in this water area. So come back up here and turn on the middle layer. And then make sure that the middle layer is selected. And for the layer mode, change it from Normal to Multiply. And now we've added shadows on the water. And you can see the effect that that has if we turn off this middle layer. And then I'll turn it back on again. And I really don't want the shadows to be quite so dark, so I can come up here with the middle layer selected, and I can change the opacity. And I'll pull this down to about 75. And then the next thing that we want to do is to add a little bit of blur to this reflected image. So select the bottom layer, go up to the Filters menu, select Blur and Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to use a horizontal and vertical blur value of about 7, and then click OK. And that added just a little bit of blur to the reflected area. And as a final step, we can merge all of these layers together now. And we can do that by going to the Image menu and select Flatten Image. And now we have our completed picture. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe and leave a comment.